I become sort of, for some reason or other, a symbol to them of what they don't like about anything that has to do with things that are, are contrary to them, anything outside of their own realm. I'm not trying to scare anybody. What we're saying is that we make recommendations based on scientific evidence and data. I don't think anyone would consider me a scaremonger. I've never been that way at all. That was Dr. Anthony Fauci on um, Neil Cavuto's program on Fox last Friday, and good for Neil Cavuto for hosting him. Fauci there defending himself after several pro several attacks from prominent Republicans who've been working to undercut the country's top infectious disease expert during one of the most precarious stretches in the country's fight against COVID. Fauci coming under particular fire from one Senator Lindsey Graham, who in a series of weird tweets claimed that the coronavirus was spreading rampantly at detention centers on the southern border and pleaded with Fauci to address what he called the country's, quote, biggest super spreader event. And while Fauci acknowledged that the border situation was indeed very dire, he made clear he had nothing to do with the border and called the whole interaction, quote, bizarre. With cases rising around the country, this latest attempt by the right to politicize science and our COVID response puts our recovery in jeopardy. At the very moment, experts are warning that the country could be on the brink of a fourth surge if we don't do all of the right things. Joining our conversation, Laura Garrett, health policy analyst, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, foreign policy magazine columnist, and one of our favorite people to turn to. Um, first on this moment, um, it's almost as confusing as it's ever been. If you pull down all the vaccine stories, the, the news is better than we were prepared to see it. In countries that are farther along, I'm thinking Israel, there's news that the vaccine doesn't just protect against disease, it largely shuts down transmission. On the other hand, the variants that you and Dr. Osterholm and others have warned about do indeed seem to be here in our country and they do seem to be more contagious and perhaps more lethal. Talk about balancing those two buckets of information. Thank you, Nicole, because, boy, that's exactly the issue we need to be talking about right now. We're in a time of real confusion, and it's justifiable that the average American is feeling like they're getting mixed messages. Things are kind of goofy. They can't figure out should they be very scared or not scared at all or somewhere in between. You know, just three weeks ago when we were sort of demarcating this arbitrary uh, alleged one-year anniversary of the epidemic, the news was full of past tense stories. It was as if the whole pandemic mm. was suddenly in our rear view mirror and we could all lollygag off into the sunset with smiles on our faces. Um, and then of course we've had spectacular success rolling out the vaccines. You know, on Saturday, 4 million Americans got vaccinated in one day. That's amazing. And that was on a holiday weekend. Um, so there's lots to be excited about, but there is also a great deal that is nerve wracking, fingernail biting. The reason that CDC director Rochelle Walensky said she saw gloom and doom on the horizon. And that is because, first of all, we have surging variant strains, not one, not two, not three, not six, a whole array of different variants from all over the world and some homegrown ones, such as we have here in New York City. The India variant that seems to be behind this huge surge of uh, COVID in both India and Bangladesh is a double mutation, and it has shown up now in San Francisco. The terrible variant that is sweeping across Brazil, and is at least partially why Brazil now has the number one horrible status of the biggest death tolls in the world right now. Um, mm. Brazil's variant has shown up in Boston and in the Massachusetts area. And boy, Michigan is fighting out of control spread. And this is really being driven by the UK variant, the so-called B117, which is a rapid transmitter. So we have this mixed picture where justifiably people are confused. Are we supposed to read this as a time of danger, as a time of joy? And illustrating that, Nicole, mm -hmm. this weekend, the holiday weekend saw two big changes. One, we went back to mm -hmm. 2019 levels of airplane traffic across the nation. Mm -hmm. And this movie, Godzilla versus Kong, took in almost $49 million in two days. And that was people in the seats 
in movie theaters. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.